In this video, we take a look at number bases, and in particular, the three base number systems you need to know about for the exam, binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. So let's start with the base 10 number system known as decimal. And this is the number system that you are most familiar with. You've been using it ever since you very first started to count. As you know, it contains just 10 unique digits, ranging from 0 to 9. Now, have you ever stopped to consider for a moment why our number system has evolved this way? Well, the actual answer is that no one really knows, but it is most likely have to do with the fact that we have a total of 10 fingers and thumbs. And so it became quite natural to count off the numbers 1 through 10 on our fingers. So with the decimal system, we don't have a unique single digit for the number 10 or any higher numbers. We have to put separate digits together. So of course we make up a 10 with a one followed by a zero. So let's look at how that actually works with larger numbers. Well, we'll start with the 10 and obviously I've written that out here. Now I've got two leading zeros on the beginning, but that doesn't affect the fact that this is the number 10, 0, 0, 1, 0. You will know from basic maths at primary school that the weighting of the headings in each of these columns goes up by 10 each time. So what I have here is naught of thousands plus naught of hundreds plus one in the tens column plus naught in the ones column. So the number 10. If we take a bigger number now, so 4273, the exact same principle is applied. The column on the far left is our thousands columns, so we have four times a thousand. We add that to the next column, which is two lots of a hundred. We add that to seven lots of ten and three lots of ones, with 4,273. Now, of course, we don't perform that calculation in our head. When we see the number 4273, we are so used to it now that we simply read it straight out as 4,273. Notice once again how the column weightings, that's the headings, are increasing by a factor of 10 every time we move one space to the left. And this is because decimal is a base 10 number system. So there are two other number systems that you need to know about for the GCSE. That's base 2 binary and base 16 hexadecimal. Now, everything I've gone through so far might seem really obvious. I mean, after all, you've been counting using decimal ever since primary school. But the principles involved are exactly the same for any other base number system, including base 2 and base 16. So let's have a look. So with the base 2 binary number system, we only have two unique digits. So a 0 and a 1, and that's it. All other numbers in binary must be made up of a combination of these two digits. So what is the number I've got represented here? Well, the first thing you'll notice is the weighting of the column headings has changed. Starting on the right, we have the ones column, then the twos, then the fours, then the eights. It's doubling each time or timesing by two, and that's because we have a base two number system. So we just apply the same rules we did for the decimal system. Here I have naught lots of eights added to naught lots of fours. I've got one, two, and I'm adding that to one, one. So the number one, one in binary is three in decimal. And you need to read this as one, one, and obviously not 11, because an 11 is a decimal number. So let's do exactly the same thing, but this time for a slightly larger number. The process, although, is identical. So starting on the left here, I have a 1 in the 8 column. So I've got 1 lots of 8. I'm adding that to 0 lots of 4. I'm adding that to 1 lot of 2. And finally, 1 lot of 1. So I have an 8 plus a 2 plus a 1. So this number is 11 in decimal. So the binary number 1011 is 11 in decimal. And again, just to reiterate, the weighting of the column headings is times in by 2 every time we move to the left, 
because binary is a base 2 number system. Now obviously to represent bigger numbers you're going to need to increase the number of columns you use. At GCSE you're going to be expected to be able to understand and represent and write numbers up to 8 bits in size. So that's 8 columns. Of course, therefore, if we start at the right with our 1 and then we times by 2 every time, we end up with column weightings of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and finally 128. This means there's a range of numbers that you're going to be expected to know about at GCSE in base 2 binary. The smallest number involves putting a naught in every single column and of course that represents 0. The biggest number possible will be putting a 1 in every single column. So that would be 128 plus a 64 plus a 32 plus a 16 and 8, a 4, a 2 and a 1. And that's 255 in decimal. So hexadecimal is a base 16 number system and it follows exactly the same principles as the other number systems we've just been looking at. The only difference is with hex, we have 16 unique digits. Now, this obviously presents us with a bit of a unique problem. What do we use to represent the hex digits 10 to 15? We can't simply use our decimal numbers 10 for 10 or 15 for 15, as these are two digits stuck together. Well, we simply choose to replace digits 10 to 15 with the alphabetic letters A through F. So in hex, we have 16 unique digits representing 0 to 15, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and then A representing 10 from decimal through to 15 for F. So let's just check you've got all that. We'll summarize it here. You can see a table with decimal base 10 on the left, hex base 16 in the middle, and binary base 2 on the right. Zero is represented exactly the same in all three bases, as is the number one. When we get to the number two, things obviously have to change a little bit. In decimal, we have a two available because it's a base 10 number system. In hex, we have the digit 2 available, but in binary we don't. We only have a naught and a 1, and we're going to have to make up the number 2 out of those two digits. The answer is 10. Remember, this is 10, not 10. 10 is a decimal number. The binary equivalent of 10 is 10, because it's a 0 in the 1 column, and as we move to the left, a 1 in the 2 column. We can proceed all the way down here to nine. So I've got nine in decimal, I've got nine in hex, and there's nine in binary. So that's nine in binary, because starting on the left there, I've got one in the eight column, two zeros, and one in the one column, and eight plus a one is nine. So what happens on the next row down? Well, obviously in decimal, so our number system, we have to start putting numbers together. So we have a one and a zero. That's what we call 10. Hex is still able to use a single digit to represent the decimal value of 10. But because we lack a digit for that, we use the capital letter A. And so the table carries on until we get to the decimal value 15, which is represented by F in hex, and 1111 in binary. So just a quick recap, computers in the field of computer science use different base number systems. Binary is base 2, that's the digits 0 and 1, and it's easy to represent two states like on or off, or high or low voltage, and this is ideal for computer science and electronics based systems. Our number system is known as decimal base 10, and has the unique digits 0 through 9. And finally, hexadecimal, base 16, 15 unique digits, 0 through 9, followed by A through to F. Hex numbers can be expressed more compactly than binary numbers, and this is the one of the reasons we use it. And we're actually going to look at that in a little more detail in another video.